Hello. Are you insecure about your command of English? Do you want your conversation to be more confident and your writing more grammatical? Would you like to have an educated way of talking, a powerful and pleasant voice, perhaps a few published books to your name? This week on Word of Mouth, we're going to meet some people who will insist that they can give you all that, at a price, of course. Don't worry, if all you want is your life story, expertly told in a beautifully bound hardback book with your name on the cover, you can have that without any of the bother of actually writing it. Here's the man to do it for you, Chris Newton. Chris, you're advertising on the internet. We help you write your memoirs, autobiography, family history or, in fact, anything you want to write. Is there much demand for this service? There's an increasing demand as people are beginning to realise that uh, memories are being lost, I think, as people die and move on. And we're at the end of a period of a lot of very eventful things have happened to people's lives. I mean, my parents went through the war. And sadly, it's too late for me to ask them to give me their memoirs of what happened then because I didn't get around to it when there was time. And I think a lot of people are having that sort of experience, wanting their parents particularly to uh, lay down um, for future generations some of the things that happened to them. So what's involved? Uh, do you use a tape recorder? I mean, how do you work? Um, it depends on really on how the client wants to play it. We're very happy to take a script from them, a, a type script from them, and turn it into a finished book. In most cases, they do need some help with the words because most people are not professional writers, even though they may think they are. So we diplomatically say to them, do you think it could be improved by doing this and maybe cutting this section a bit and putting in some more information here? So it varies from people who can actually write very well and who can put down a coherent history as a document to those who can hardly put one word before the other. And uh, fortunately, most of them know who they are. A little bit more difficult if people think that they've got a good script and they bring it to you and you know that it's not really readable, it needs to be edited, and they feel that they've already done the job. I, I wouldn't say that happens very often, but it can happen. Now, if you were ghostwriting for celebrities, and perhaps you do sometimes, I mean, in a way that's, that's got its own momentum as far as people wanting to read it because they want to know what Roy Keane said to so-and-so at such and such a time and so on. Some of the people who come with their stories, I mean, do you ever think that's a bit dull and I can't really do much with it? I'm trying to be tactful here. That's not a problem because all they want to do is lay down in print the memories of someone's life and probably they're only going to want 20, 30 copies printed which will be distributed around the family. So they are not looking to sell their memoirs. If it was a Roy Keane's memoirs, we'd be looking at sales of you know tens of thousands of copies and so it's a different matter. It's a commercial animal. But here we are providing a service to people who want to be able to pick up a book and say, this is the book about my family, and I'd like you to have a copy, I'd like you to read it. And no one is paying for it, apart from the person who obviously who contracts with us to, to produce it. And how much do you charge? Can I ask that directly? Um, because obviously it does cost. Uh, yeah, it depends very much on how much work is needed and what the budget is. It's costing less and less, actually, to print a book these days with the advent of digital printing. It doesn't cost thousands anymore. I was thinking more of what you charge for your wordy work. I would say that depending on the state of the typescript, it would be anything from perhaps £1,000 upwards, depending on the amount of work. But, I mean, it is a very open figure. It depends on, on the nature of the beast, how much travelling is involved, how much time is involved, and what the available budget is. So what books have you produced for people so far, or, or is that, do you have to keep it a secret? Well, I certainly wouldn't want to divulge details about individual projects, but those we've done so far have mostly been people who've come to us to say, I want to put down in writing the story of my parents' life because I think it was interesting. They lived through the war, they lived through poverty, they had adventures, they had great successes and failures, uh, and I want to do it while they're still around so that I can interview them or you can interview them. And then we have to decide how we do that, uh, whether it all comes through one person who may possibly produce a typescript for us from one source or whether we have to talk to several people. It gets more complicated if we talk to several people because sometimes you get differing accounts of the same events. Mm, they could row about it. Yeah, well, they could, yes. And I think my recommendation would be if you want to write your family history, don't do it by committee. You take responsibility for doing it. You put together the words. You talk to your family. Don't give them the right of approval of what you're going to write because mm. if you start doing that, it's just a nightmare. Yeah, Gladys chopped down the tree. No, she didn't. That was Harry. <laughs> That's right. Or much worse things than chopping down trees. I'm yes. most, most families. I, I've done a, a commercial biography of a, a chap who had a very colourful life which involved interviewing dozens and dozens of people around the country 
And they all had their own stories about this guy. He was married four times. He did some pretty dreadful things. He was a Spitfire pilot, so he did some very noble things as well. I was able, as a commercial writer, to make a decision about what should go into that. But when the family are producing it, then the decision is up to them. Chris Newton, thanks very much. If you really want to improve the way you write and speak English, here's a good place to start. Get hold of an essay by George Orwell called Politics and the English Language. He wrote it 63 years ago. Next week in Word of Mouth, we're going to devote the whole programme to that essay and consider what it has to say to the Britain of December 2009.